the use of scatter charts is when you want to compare not across a category but you want to compare two measures that is when you can create a scatter chart and it is going to give you small data points in forms of small circles or bubbles that you would be able to see on your graphs so let's say what we want to do now is we want to compare um again our sales and units so what we're going to add to the x-axis or the y-axis maybe our sales okay so you get one nice little circle over here because we haven't defined the other axis the other axis is going to be let's say the total units so so on your x-axis now you have the total units so we said that we wanted to compare two measures across each other but then again you have to slice and dice it by some attribute so mm, let's make that attribute again category in our case the category would only be a few so let's add manufacturer okay again i didn't select the visualization Select the visualization and your details would be manufacturer. So now you can see that there are different data points created. Most of them are clustered over here. So not much sales. There are some outliers. You can see this this data point, particular data point, which has got a lot of units and a lot of sales happening. Uh, this is this point, which has got a lot of units, but not as much sales happening. So again, something of concern probably. Now it's not um, uh, very visible. So you can change your formatting options. Simple. Go to your format pane and in your shapes, you have a marker shape as we can see. Um, You can make it bigger if you want. You can change your shape. So you can change it to a circle or a square or whatever. So circles are good. Then we can go to fill point, turn it on because we want to fill the dots now so that it's more easy for us to visualize. Okay. So you can turn your fill on and off depending again on what you want to display on your uh, particular graph. Now there's an option here called color by. Let's explore this option, switch it to on. And again, okay, so it has simply colored it by the different uh, manufacturers because that is what we are categorizing it by. So your different bubbles have been colored by the different manufacturers the other ones are very standard you can choose your data colors and so on let's go back over here and add a legend legend can be your category so once you add a legend your color coding would be based on the legends uh, which is going to be our category so we have got four categories and the Blue one denotes the mixed category, red is black one denotes the rural category, and so on. So there's one other option probably. Oh, data colors. You can choose your data colors for the different categories. And let's see what we have in fill point. Nothing. I have in shapes. General okay. high density sampling. You can turn it off and on. Okay. So there is a particular option in which you can create borders around these uh, circles that we have created. So I'm just looking to find where that option is. Because then it makes it easier to distinguish between these overlapping kind of bubbles.
Okay, it's it's somewhere here in this formatting tab. I'm not able to find it right now. I don't remember where it is, but you can uh, find it. And let's see if it is in the borders. I don't think it would be in the borders. Okay, let it be. So there is one option. You should just be aware of it that we can um, border. We can create a border um, outside these bubble points and so that it will be easier to distinguish especially when you have got overlapping bubbles and something like this um, so this is uh, what is known as a scatter chart what we are primarily trying to achieve here is compare two different measures uh, with each other and then we have categorized them uh, by the manufacturer and color coded them by the category so you can do these different things for a scatter chart now there's some other interesting features that we can add to the scatter chart and if you select the scatter chart go to the analytics pane let's see what all we have got so we have got these similar kind of uh, options that we had for line chart so we have all those options we also have a ratio line and symmetric sh uh, shading um, associated with them but what is most interesting is uh let's go down below and if you go down i'm in the fields well you'll see that there's some other options available for this now there's one thing called the size so size um you can vary the size let's go to the sales fact you can choose some measure and vary the size of this bubble based on the value of that measure so Mm. let's try adding the sales dollars over here so now what we have said that we want the size of the bubbles to be based on the sales amount so you can see that this is the biggest bubble over here so this has the maximum sales happening uh this and all these bubbles have now varying sizes based on the amount of sales that is happening so you can measure it by the sales uh, any of these measures you can choose and you can vary the size of these bubbles so again it makes it easier to see how these sales amounts are varying for these different manufacturers and the other interesting thing uh, for a line chart is something called a play axis now play axis is an option to automate uh, to animate uh, this line chart or this scatter chart actually or a line chart and what we are going to add to the play axis is something which is time related so probably a date column and it is going to uh, animate this visualization across the data for those different years so if i just go to date and add let's say the year okay where did it add it by default it added it to the details which we do not want I'm just going to drag and drop the ear to the play axis. Once you drag and drop it to the play axis, you'll see that there is a, a timeline that gets created at the very bottom. You see, you can see that there is a play button which you can use to play this uh, for different years. And it is currently on 2014 and the year is highlighted over here. You can go and select one particular year. So let's say uh, I want to go to 2017. You can just click on that here and it will show you how the different uh, sales and units amounts were based on categories and manufacturers uh, manufacturers for that particular year so you can choose your year from uh, down at the bottom over here so if i say let's say 2005 okay i'm not able to choose it you choose it from the scroll bar so this is going to be a 2001 this is going to be a 2002 2003 2004 and so on okay um, what is an interesting option actually over here is to be able to animate this so if you go back to the first year which is going to be 1999 and just click on this play button this is going to play on its own so it is going to animate this thing 
and it is going to show you the distribution for the sales and the units across these years uh, and across these manufacturers and categorizations till the end of your timeline. So this is a very interesting feature. You can just play on this. See, it is, it is a very cool feature that you can use in your scatter charts. It's available for the scatter charts and you can use it for your scatter charts. So just animate your scatter chart and it makes it appear so easy. Um, and you can actually follow the progress of your or the growth or loss of your sales or uh, units uh, sold across all these years. What you can also do is select a particular bubble chart and just click on it. If you click on it, it will show you this whole trace of the growth for that particular categorization and manufacturer across these all these different years. So these different years, it, it just gives you a track of the growth. If you then go control and press on some other one, you can see the whole growth. So you can see that it went up till here in the year 2004 and then ever since it has been decreasing. 2005, 6, 7, 8. So again, something of concern for this. It's a positive upward growth altogether. But now for this one, it has started to decrease. And now if I hit on the click button on the play button from here, it will keep on playing along with the trend lines that it has been creating. So if you want to follow along your growth in terms of sales and number of units sold across all these years, you can use this option as well. Okay. So what I did was just click on a particular bubble to see its growth and uh, track it back uh, to the previous years, how it has been growing across the years. And you can just then animate on it and it will play along those lines and it will keep on uh, displaying those lines as well. So it's a pretty cool way and a very good way to convey information about the changes that are happening across our timeline. Okay, and you can actually see whether how your particular sales amount, your quantities have been changing and you can animate it and you can easily and very effectively convey this information to across to your user. So this is, these are pretty cool features that a scatter chart provides um, in terms of displaying the information.